Dear friends, welcome to another video. Today we are going to use a Raspberry Pi to send weather data to a remote web server and store them into a MySQL database. Then we are going to display all the data using a simple PHP script. Without any further delay, let's get started. Hello guys, I am Nick and welcome to Educates TV, a channel that is all about do-it-yourself electronics projects with Arduino, Raspberry Pi, ESP8266 and other popular ports. Today's project is very important and extremely useful because we will learn how to store data online. I am using a Raspberry Pi 3 board along with the SenseHat. The SenseHat is an add-on board for the Raspberry Pi which offers many sensors, including a temperature sensor, a humidity sensor, a barometric pressure sensor and many more. I have prepared a detailed tutorial about this add-on board a few weeks ago. You can watch it by clicking on the card here. The Raspberry Pi every 10 minutes measures the temperature, the humidity and the barometric pressure and sends the data via Wi-Fi in a remote web server which stores them in a MySQL database. We can see all the data from anywhere in the world simply by visiting a web page which displays all the data in a simple table. As you can see, I have let the Raspberry Pi to run for a couple of hours and I can see all the data along with the time of its measurements. Cool, isn't it? Let's now see how to build this project. The hardware setup is really simple. All we need is a Raspberry Pi and a SenseHat port. The cost of the project is around $80. You can find links for the parts in the description below. Let's now see the software of the project. The code of the project consists of two parts, the Raspberry Pi code and the server code. First, we are going to examine the server code. Of course, you must have a web server available. Since 2006, I use Bluehost as my hosting provider and I host all my websites there. If you don't have a web server available with around $4 per month, you can have your own Bluehost account. You can find a link for it in the description of the video. Of course, you can use any other host you like. I use Bluehost for over 10 years, that's why I recommend it. For this project, I have created a new folder under my educates.tv website, which is called Weather. In this folder, I have placed three PHP scripts. I have also created a MySQL database, which will store all the data. In the database, I have created a table named Data, which has five columns. The ID of each entry, the date, the temperature, the humidity and the barometric pressure. I won't describe how I created the database in this video because it takes time. You may not be interested and there are a lot of tutorials online about this subject, but I would love to prepare a separate database tutorial. Do you want me to create a detailed tutorial on how to create a MySQL database? Please vote by clicking on the card here. If there is enough interest, I will publish a video about that soon. The connect.php file is responsible for connecting to the database. It contains the configuration settings for the database. So we need to enter the username, the database password and the hostname. In this line of code we have to enter the database name. You have to edit this file in order to enter your configuration settings if you build this project. The Raspberry Pi sends the data to a simple PHP script which is called addata.php. This script connects to the MySQL database using the connect.php script and stores the data in the database. If we want to see the data from the database, all we have to do is to visit the index.php file from a browser. The index.php script will connect to the database, again using the connect.php script, and it will ask the database to return all the stored data. Then it will display all the data in an HTML table. Now let's see the Raspberry Pi code. The code reads the temperature, the humidity and the barometric pressure from the SenseHat every 10 minutes. I tried to perform a simple calibration to the sensors using a commercial weather station unit I own. For the temperature, since the Raspberry Pi gets hot, I calibrate the readings of the sensor according to its CPU temperature. The hotter the CPU, the bigger the temperature difference we get. Of course, the values we get are not very accurate, but close enough. After that, with this line of code, we send all the data to the server. As you can see, we construct a web address like this. 
We have included the temperature, the humidity and the pressure values to the URL. The add data PHP script at the server will extract the data and it will save the data in the database. Notice that we don't send the time of the measurement. The add data PHP file automatically adds the date when entering the data to the database. That's it. Our setup is ready. As always, you can find the code of this project, both the Raspberry Pi and the server code, in the description below. I have placed the file which is called weatherdatalogger.py on the desktop, so in order to run it, all we have to do is to navigate to the desktop with the command cd desktop and run the code with the following command, sudo python weatherdatalogger.py. The program will print four values at the console before sending the data to the server. The first value is the CPU temperature, then is the temperature, the humidity and the barometric pressure. If we now visit the website, we can see that the values are now in the database. As you can see, with this project we have moved a step forward. We are now able not only to send data to a remote web server, but also to save them into a MySQL database. With this knowledge available, we can build more advanced and capable projects. This is just a demonstration of what we can achieve. I used the sense hat in order to keep the hardware and the Raspberry Pi code simple and focus on the server code. Since the server code is now ready, we can replace the sense hat with other sensors in order to reduce the cost of the project and the accuracy. Even better, we can replace the Raspberry Pi with a Wemos D1 Mini and have the cost of the project down to $10. Another option is to use the GSM shield and send data to the server without Wi-Fi from anywhere in the world using the GPRS internet service. Amazing stuff! Stay tuned as many more projects like this are coming. I would love to hear your thoughts on this project. Do you find it useful and what kind of projects do you plan to build that require an online database? Please post your comments and ideas below. Thanks! If this is your first time here, I would love to have you subscribed. In this channel, I post videos about do-it-yourself projects every Saturday. I love making things and I believe that anyone can make things, anyone can become a maker. That's why I created this channel in order to share my knowledge with the community and learn from the community. I hope you will join us. Until next Saturday, watch, learn, build.